Hello everybody, Tiffany Solorio here for Create with Prima. Today I'm going to be sharing uh, how I created this layout and I'm using some 12 by 12 watercolor paper from Prima and it comes in uh, this paper pad here with glue on both sides and so I take my heat tool and run it across the glue as I'm pulling against or pulling the paper apart and that way I don't have any ripped pages. I find that it helps a lot. I'm taking this IOD stamp set and I will have all of the supplies listed down below. I am taking the largest stamp block Prima has and I am going to, uh, well first I'm going to place the stamp where, kind of where I want it just to, so I have an idea and then put it on the block and then I'm going to use some Versamark to ink up that stamp. I ink it up quite a bit because I want to make sure that it's fully coated with the Versamark because I'm going to be adding some uh, embossing powder. So I want to make sure that all of the embossing powder is going to stick to that ink. And you could see I'm adding a lot of pressure onto that stamp. And you got to be careful you don't want it to move around or else you get sm uh, like a smudged look. So I add the embossing powder and this is a super fine embossing powder. It really works well with uh, intricate stamps and um, like if you were doing a really small sentiment or something like that, uh, this embossing powder works really well. So I'm taking my heat tool and just melting that embossing powder. So I am going for a emboss resist watercolor look. And I did actually cut the stamp just a little bit, just a couple, I think there was like a little B on there. And then I think this is the one that I cut off. It's just some little leaves. Uh, it's, it's all fine. <laughs> I am just using it to um, add a little bit more detail and so that I can broaden the stamped image onto my paper. And again, I add the embossing powder and now I'm just heat setting it or heating it and melting that uh, powder. So now is the fun part. So like I said, this is watercolor paper. So I add some water uh, where I want the color to go. And I think that's really important if you want the, to achieve a watercolor look. So then you add the color that you want. And I am taking a Prima watercolor brush, which I love, they're so gorgeous. Uh, and I'm just helping that color spread around just a little bit. And because I added the water to begin with, it uh, helps it so that I can spread it around just a little bit. So I'm taking a little bit more water and then I'm going to take that soft teal. This is soft teal. You can use uh, glistening waves and if, you could see on the side, I was actually planning on using my watercolors for this, but then I changed my mind. So you could use those, you can use the oil uh, pastels, you can water down some acrylic paint, anything that will help create this watercolor look. So again, I'm just continuing to add the water and then the color and then kind of spreading it around with this brush and I don't recall the size but I will list it down below in the description box for you and now that I added the color you can start to see all of that stamped image and it's just so gorgeous in person it's hard to really tell um, you know on camera but I did want to add a little bit more depth to the stamped image not too much I didn't I wanted this more you know a little bit softer look but I am adding some dragonfly blue and I take the paintbrush dip it in the um, bottle and then I'm just adding it um, just to add a little bit of shadow to the image it's not going to be perfect it's just going to add a little bit more depth to the whole project and whole um, layout once it's all completed. And you could definitely start to see more of the emboss resist effect. So gorgeous. I love doing this and I love uh, using embossing powder when I'm watercoloring anything. I just find that it's just so gorgeous. So again, I love this look and you can use anything that you have on hand. It doesn't have to be color bloom sprays to achieve this look. 
At this point, I wasn't planning on using a different color, but I felt it needed just another added color, and so I'm using Peony, and this color is really gorgeous, and these colors really complement each other. Normally, I would not do this color combination, but I was really inspired by Jaya. She is on the Prima Design team, you probably know her work, super talented. A uh, while back, they did a, I forgot what the post was, uh, I will try to find it and link it down below for you guys. It The uh, layout had these similar colors in it and I just loved it. So I was inspired by her work. All right, enough rambling. So I decided that I was going to spray it a little bit and you could see that I am adding water straight after. I wanted to still um, go along with the watercolor look. So I have to add the water and because the teal color is still a little bit wet, it still bleeds really nicely. Um, but I, again, I wanted to add that water just to help it um, flow a little bit better. And I'm adding it around the teal color. So, and also in spots where the teal was a little bit more faint so that it kind of blends together a little bit in some areas. And I'm trying not to make a muddy mess. <laughs> um, and I do take a baby wipe and wipe off some of the color off of the embossing powder. And that way it, you know, the whole image stands out. Once these colors dry, they will lighten up quite a bit. So the pink especially will not be as vibrant. If you want a even softer look, you just have to add more water and um, so that it spreads out a little bit more and it dilutes that color just even more. So I set that aside to dry and now I'm taking a resin frame. Frank Garcia designed these. They are so gorgeous. And again, I will have all of these supplies listed down below. I can't recall which one this is, but again, I will have the supplies listed uh, below of the, in the description box. And I am just taking some gesso, adding a light coat. This isn't really necessary. These frames, I feel, take color really well. Um, but I think it's more out of habit that I'm doing it more than anything. So I add the frame to the layout and you could see that I am keeping everything. I'm going to keep all of the embellishments and everything on the left side. That's kind of how I want this, uh, you know, the composition of my layout to be. So I add the, uh, the picture to a little journal card from the Zella Teal collection. And then I'm just adding some flowers here and there and kind of you know, building up all of my different layers. I'm also adding some um, uh, upholstery thread. I always want to say embroidery thread, but it's upholstery thread and it's really thick. It's thicker than just regular sewing thread and it holds, you know, if you're trying to bunch it up like I do, it just is a little bit more sturdy. And so I'm adding it under a lot of these flowers just to give the whole layout, a little bit more texture. I also forgot to say that if you were wanting to add some uh, light paste or modeling paste with a stencil or anything, you're gonna wanna do that before you add all of your embellishments, of course, because it's a little bit hard to maneuver around the flowers and different things. I didn't add any to this layout. I just Basically wanted it to be the watercolor background and the flowers and then the picture, um, you know, as the focal point, obviously it's, it is a layout. And so I, again, I didn't add any, but if you were wanting to, to make this more of a mixed media type of layout, then you will definitely want to do that before you add all of your embellishments. So I am basically keeping with the pinkish and teal colors for my uh, flowers and I do add gesso to them to lighten them up just a, a little bit and I have all of the flowers listed down below so be sure to check the description box if you are wondering um, what flowers I'm using. I do add a few 
uh, embellishments from the ephemera pack from the Zella Teal collection. So this is like a little tag. And then I think I added like a little heart and the butterfly from the flower um, pack. I was just adding them here and there just to fill in some of those gaps and um, just to build up those layers. So I'm taking some 3D matte gel and I have the Mega Art Stones. I wanted just a little bit of texture and these Mega Art Stones are perfect for that. They're really nice and lightweight so it's not really going to weigh down your project. And I like that about these art stones that Prima has um, come out with. So I am sprinkling them on where I added the 3D matte gel. And then I'm pushing them in to the gel. This is how I find that works best when adding the art stones, whether it's the mega art stones, the mini ones, or the regular ones. It just, it works the best, I think, just to kind of push it in all that gel so that it adheres to the project. And to finish the layout, I am just going to add some splatters. I watered down some gesso and I covered up the photo so I made sure that I didn't get any on there. And that is going to complete this project. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give this video a thumbs up and I hope to see you over on the Create with Prima Facebook page. And thank you guys for watching and I will catch you guys later. Bye.